Good day, folks. Imagine a world where energy is abundant, pollution-free, and available to everyone at no cost. A world where our energy needs are met, not by depleting resources or harming our environment, but by tapping into the natural, ever-present forces that surround us. This is not about creating energy out of nothing, which would define the laws of thermodynamics, but about harnessing the vast energy that is already around us. As we stand at the crossroads of energy revolution, it's crucial to explore alternate energy resources that are sustainable and environmentally friendly. The Earth's field is a powerful force. It offers a promising avenue. Uh, by leveraging this field, we have the potential to unlock a green, pollution-free and virtually unlimited resources of energy. The implications of such a breakthrough for our society are profound. Clean energy can power our homes, power vehicles, no more fossil fuels. There's a lot here. So let us consider the pioneer work of Tom Bearden and his motionless electromagnetic generator, Meg. Bearden's Meg operates on the principles of the energy of the vacuum, if you want to call it that. It's a permanent magnet here. It introduces an EMF with the trigger coils and the pickup windings, basically. This concept is in the bound of known physics, but it still challenges our, our traditional understandings, of course. So let's push the idea further. Instead of using the local magnet, let's use what's already there, the Earth's magnetic field. It's a vast, stable source of energy. It's already there, folks. By using a frequency trigger to, to modulate the natural field, we can induce an EMF and with a carefully designed coil setup. The setup is not only scalable, but it's environmentally friendly. Uh, we could use a large circular core. For example, here's a representation of it about 100 meters, 100 feet, I should say, diameter. So you have coils that serve as the trigger at high frequency and the pickup coils. This generates a pulse DC modulating the Earth's magnetic field, inducing a powerful EMF in the pickup coil. This modulating signal could be amplified and then sent back into the grid essentially. And it can be controlled and modulated at the frequency we want with magnetic amplifiers. So we're not, we're extending our capability and not and using the forces that have already been there. Uh, the benefits for our society are very, very profound here. A lower greenhouse emissions, more steps towards energy independence. This is very big if we dig deeper into the technical aspects of this. And the ultimate goal, folks, it's for a greener, cleaner, and more prosperous future for all together. So if we explore this, this is a really interesting way that could pave for a new era, basically, of energy generation. So let's start, because there's a lot here. So um, the introduction is something anyways. Um, so as most of you know, I was using the Tom Beard and Meg. I looked at it and figured, you know, why not use the Earth's magnetic field? Replace this if you see what I mean. Now the issue is, um, the Earth's magnetic field, I got some notes here because there's just too much, so you'll see me with my notes. I simply can't memorize at all here. But the Earth's magnetic field is about 25 to 65 microteslas, or 0 0.25 to 0 0.65 gauss. So it's low, but it can still be used to generate electricity if the setup is properly designed. So basically the key factors to consider here is the magnetic flux density, which is the strength of the Earth's magnetic field, and the area of the coil, which is the surface area through the magnetic field line passes, and of course the number of turns in your pickup coil to induce the EMF. Now, Basically, con the concept overview, here's a representation of how this could look like, which is your circular core, which would be 100 feet, and your pickup coil. We use a trigger, as I specified, of DC. Uh, it has to be DC, and I'll get into that later on. So pulse DC, so 10 kilohertz is a good frequency for this, and this modulates, and um, 
this is our magnetic amp, which could convert it to what we need, 60 hertz or whatever, and back into the grid very efficiently without losing um, a lot of energy in the process. So the core idea here is to use a stationary setup that interacts with the Earth's magnetic field. We employ a high-frequency oscillating magnetic field to manipulate the Earth's magnetic field. Utilize coils and magnetic materials to capture and convert the magnetic energy into usable electrical power is the goal, of course, here. So the magnetic field oscillations, what we want to do basically is implement a coil, which is the L windings here. And that generates the high frequency magnetic field, that's a trigger. The coil can be turned on and off at a high frequency for rapid changes in the magnetic environment. We're essentially modulating the nearby Earth's magnetic field. So um, the induction mechanism, basically we want to position a large, larger coil essentially, the 100 foot core here. Uh, within the influence of both the Earth's magnetic field and the oscillating magnetic field of the system here. And uh, using the oscillating field to periodically shield and expose a larger coil to the Earth's magnetic field, that induces a current, essentially. That's the whole idea. So um, for detailed designs, so basically if we were going to build a power plant equivalent of this, and the reason size matters, folks, is the Earth's field is relatively weak, as powerful as it is. So you need to build very large area to have minimal interactions. So I will get to the power plant power levels, and then at the end give you the smallest I was able to scale down, that would, which is still pretty big, but we'll get into that. So for the detailed design, this would be basically a, a power plant, okay? Which would be a large core, which would be the 100 foot diameter, such as here. So you guys still got pretty big, but when you think about the windmills and everything, the size of the base is pretty big. So 100 feet wouldn't be so bad as a diameter, right? So you have your large core, you have your oscillating coil, which is the L windings. And, uh, of course, it should be placed adjustment to the larger coil to modulate the magnetic flux experienced by the core coil, obviously. And, of course, our control circuits for our oscillator are 10 kilohertz and all that. So you're probably wondering here, the detailed operation. Uh, as I've explained, the high frequency oscillations varies the magnetic flux. When the L winding is off, the Earth's magnetic field is unimpeded, inducing a current in the larger coil. Uh, when the L winding is on, it field opposes or alters the local magnetic field, reducing the flux through the larger coil. That's essentially the idea in rapid switching. So we're replacing that. We're doing the same thing we're doing here in big, but we're replacing the magnet with the Earth's field instead and increasing the area of the core so we could interact with the weaker Earth magnetic field. Which, by saying weaker, it's relative to it. It's not weak at all. It's just, you'll see what I mean here. So, of course, the frequency was chosen, you know, to be a good range. You, you, it's not too high, not too low, easy to manage with. So, um... Basically, the induced EMF calculations are the typical calculations I can show you here. Um, no magic. Um, if you want to figure it out, this is the calculations to figure it out that I'm going by here. So if there's something wrong, feel free to say it, but uh, it seems pretty promising so far here, following these calculations. So for the circular core design, basically we need to use a diameter of 100 feet, okay? So once we calculate the induced EMF calculations here, this is pretty big. So we're talking about a voltage of over 70 kilovolts at over 7,000 amps, and I'm not joking here. And if you were to convert the power output, that would be around 500 milliwatts. Sorry, megawatts. So I'll just zoom here so you can see exactly what the calc... I don't want to write these down because my writing is so bad. So I figured I might as well just show you this so you can see it for yourself. So here are a few moments to see those calculations. 
So this is a lot of power, 500 megawatts. So we're talking about power plant, power plant power outputs here with just something like this using the Earth's magnetic field. So here's a summary here basically of how this could work. So let's say our trigger windings would be wire gauge 12 AWG, number of turns 1790, this was all calculated. Current, this is our trigger. So we're using a pretty powerful trigger, but we get so much more. Current 10 amp, power 1 kilowatt at 10K. So it is a pretty strong trigger, but when you see it, you're getting like... Um, See, after the losses and everything, approximately 425.7 megawatts of usable, that's what 80% efficiency. Because there's always minimal losses, right? But we can still get a lot here. So, again, this is a very, very... Um... So, the pickup windings is a little bit different in the calculation. The number of turns is 1,000. And it's multiple parallel 10... AWG wires, approximately 146 parallel wires. I know, but of course one wire can't. This is such high current, folks, that you're going to have to come up if it's going to be a power plan. Very industrial indeed. But the point is, according to the calculations and the magnetic field of the Earth, this is indeed possible, which is a very, very interesting avenue. But the device has to be large area to, uh, to be able to interact with the Earth's magnetic field and the voltages are relatively low so to get that really high voltage and high current you need big mass so um, to answer some questions here um, as I said it's comparable to power plant you know because uh, 425.7 megawatt it's comparable to small hydroelectric plants uh, it's comparable to large solar farms. It's, uh, I mean, and it's very, you know, it's similar to small power plants, basically. And uh, the cost, I don't know, but it would be environmentally friendly, obviously. And, um, of course, how do you transfer this energy to something compatible? You've got the magnetic amplifier. And the magnetic amplifier does a bit of a loss of efficiency, but it could be 95%. So this would drop maybe to about 404.415 megawatts. So I took all the calculations in consideration, folks, even the losses here, even the magnetic amplifier. Essentially, this would give us a 60 hertz compatible signal to inject back into the grid or for whatever it is you need. So... Um, Basically, I tried to figure out a more practical uh, demonstration, small-scale version, and it was very difficult because it has to be very large to interact. So the most minimum was to reduce the size to an area of one meter, bring the control power down to 10 watts, same frequency, 10 kilohertz. But what happens now, we end up having... Um, so a core diameter of one meter calculated with 20,000 turns with an input power of 10 watts for the high frequency trigger feed will induce an EMF. This is very low voltage, folks. That's what I mean by it. it's very low voltage. Only 7.85 volts, but very, very high output current, 157 amps. Not joking. So the power output is equivalent to around 1,200 watts. So in, in the real number is 1, 2, 3, 1 1.45 watts. So usable power at 80% efficiency, that's 985.16 watts with a core meter in theory of one meter doing this here. So this would be practical as a test, still out of my lead, unfortunately, to be able to build at the moment, but I would highly encourage people to try it because the math is there and the theory drives, it's just a matter of, of figuring out, you know, what core material works best, you know, as it said, very ferroelectric, that could be barium types, you know. There's a bit of exploring to do here, but all in all, um, the theory drives, and it's definitely something worthwhile exploring. 
So here's the summary of the prototype if you want to see it right here because I'm bad at writing. So I figured I may as well just show you. No secrets here. This is all calculated. Right here. You might ask yourself, and I'm going to read a little thing here I uh, did in the research, then if this is so powerful, how come it doesn't interact with our AC systems, the mains, and, it, and essentially, why is the mains not modulating and interacting with this field and blowing everything up, right? Well, I have an answer to that, okay? So I'm going to read it to you because it's pretty intense. The interaction between power systems like mains and transformers and the Earth's magnetic field is an intriguing topic. Um, reasons for limited interactions with the Earth's magnetic field is the AC nature of the mains. It's the sine wave oscillations. AC power oscill oscillation, AC power oscillates, usually at 50 or 60 hertz. This means that the magnetic field generated by AC currents alternates direction continuously. Field cancellation. Because the magnetic field alternates direction, the net interaction with the Earth's steady magnetic field over a complete cycle is minimal. The opposing fields tend to cancel each other out over time, resulting in no significant net effect. The shielding and design also of transformers and equipment shielding. Power transformers and electrical equipment are often designed and shielded to minimize inter external magnetic interaction. Of course, and is the continuous operation. During stable operation, the power system is designed to maintain consistent magnetic field strength and orientation, leading to minimal interaction with the Earth's magnetic field. But when there is a potential interaction during power disturbances, there could be sudden changes during power outages. The sudden change in current can induce transient magnetic fields. However, they are typically short-lived and localized. So, um... Our proposed setup works differently from traditional AC power systems by intentionally modulating the Earth's magnetic field to induce a usable EMF and a pickup coil. So basically this is what I'm getting at is this is basically a system, an energy reservoir that's completely ignored with traditional energy systems. We actually cancel it out with normal AC. So that's why I said earlier it has to be pulse DC. Tesla was right, Bedini was right, you know, Pulse DC is the way to go with all of this stuff. So again, back to solving the energy crisis, this could be it. It's just a matter of someone like Elon Musk who has the resources, the spark interest to engage in this kind of research. It can be done, folks. The theory is there, the mat drives. It's just a matter of building it and getting the scientific community on board here. And that it's for the benefit of the earth and humanity, really. So I don't see why we all have to keep this a secret. So I just want to tell you this as motivation, inspiration. And, you know, we could all move forward if we would all work together, folks. With that said, looking forward to what you have to say. And have yourselves all a great day.